Hey everyone, I'm Joel and I am the developer of the Gemini Plays Pokemon project. You may have heard about it on Twitch or from various social media. So my talk today will be about building a Pokemon agent harness. This will be just distilled kind of topics from what I learned in making this project. So first, I just want to go over quickly what is Gemini Plays Pokemon. And for those of you who don't know, it is a Twitch stream that I set up. It's, it's what I built to see if Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro could succeed in playing Pokemon and beating Pokemon where others have failed. By others, I mean... Claude, of course. So when I first started this, I was... Uh, I'm sure we've all heard of Claude plays Pokemon, or at least a lot of us might have. I I was also... Uh, I thought this was just really interesting, so I set up my own project based on this. And Claude had some shortcomings that I thought it might be interesting to wrap and uh, wrap a harness around and then try to fix some of those shortcomings. And in the end, we got a pretty nice polished uh, showcase. It's, you can show what, it shows what modern AI models can do when you combine things like long context, multimodal perception and tool usage. And this project actually got a fair amount of attention, like the CEO of Google, uh, he brought it up in the Google I.O. 2025 talk, you know, called it artificial Pokemon intelligence. So I just want to go over quickly what this uh, project looked like in the early stages. As you can see from the screenshot, it was just basically a screenshot or I guess an overlay of my terminal on the left and then the game screen on the right. And in the, in the beginning, it was pretty, pretty simple. The AI could walk like one tile at a time and then it would go to the next turn, it feed it some stuff, and then it would walk again. And over time it evolved. <clears throat> I added a map. I gave it a nice UI. It beat the game. And then we did it again. And of course with a better AI. Uh sorry, no, a better UI. And the purpose of this talk is just to tell you guys what makes up this harness that enable Gemini to beat the game. And you can take some of these lessons for yourself. I know the, the starter kit that uh, has a lot of this stuff already, but I think some of these lessons might be worth taking away from anyway. So with this harness architecture, it's broadly in four main categories. So we have the game IO, the agents, the memory and context, and then the tools that the agents can use. And we can see here, this is a graph. Actually, Google published this in their technical report for Gemini 2.5. So I'll have to thank them for that. This uh, you, this is basically a nice flowchart of how this architecture works. So over here in Game.io, we have the information extraction portion. It connects to, well, I use MGBA emulator, but you can use like PyBoy, things like that. It reads the RAM, uh, checks the memory addresses that are known, and takes this game state and exposes it as, you can use JSON, you can use XML or just plain text. And then you feed this into the LLM. <clears throat> and it also takes a screenshot and gives that to the LLM as well. But honestly, it's not that important. I find what's most important is just having a really good representation of the game. This is 
what the screenshot looks like in the early iteration. So there's some stuff like coordinates and color coded based on what it is, what the tile is. Later on, I was playing around with it. I tried to simplify it. And then in the end, I kind of ended up with this <clears throat> because what I think is the, the thing about this uh, harness is like the AI doesn't need these screenshots actually. So it has everything it needs in the game state that you provide it itself. It could basically play this game blind. So if you're applying this to like an LLM, you don't need an LLM that can do vision input. Uh, you can you can get by just fine by extracting everything as uh, in text and then just feeding it into the context. So on top of the information extraction, we have the context goals and critique system. So what the context uh, management thing is, is that well, even though Gemini 2.5 Pro has like a 1 million token context, it's, well, what, what we found out in practice is that after, let's say 100K tokens or so, it kind of ends up in little patterns, little loops sometimes. So what I ended up having to do is just add a periodic summarization to keep the context. And then I clear the context of everything else. So it just knows what it did, but only in a over, like a, I guess a higher level sense, it doesn't have the discrete information. Like I press this button, I did this. So that helps avoid getting it stuck into patterns like that. And then we have the goal system over here. So this is how it keeps track of what it's doing. It has primary, secondary, and tertiary goals. So the primary is like, you know, I need to get this next badge. Secondary goal is something to help it achieve the primary goal. And tertiary goal is to just kind of like side quests and things like that. I also actually try giving it some more discrete goals to follow, but it's not really that helpful, I guess. It's it's not necessary, I should say. And, and then I think also something else that's important is to have a self-critique loop. So in my harness, I did this every 25 turns. Sometimes I tweak this to test, but 25 turns is like a good baseline. And what it does is it feeds the context to a new prompt, and then that asks it to reflect on the decisions the main agent made, any errors or ways to improve on those errors. And then the main agent takes these suggestions and uh, hopefully listens to them. And of course, sometimes that also has hallucinations. So you got to watch out for that. Like it'll tell it oh, to go like Southeast or whatever, when the real goal is Northwest. So this is like not always beneficial, but I think most of the time it is just something to watch out for. And then something that's really important as well is having a map memory, which without this, you have problems where the AI doesn't remember where it's been. So for example, in maze-like places like Viridian Forest, it'll just always have to figure out which way to go. And then the way you mitigate that is to give it a little mini map of, so of sorts, a fog of war mini map. And what this is, is basically every turn you record what's on screen in your harness and and save like what tile is where, like a coordinate grid kind of thing. And then with the system, it unlocks a couple of nice things, which is you can tell the agent like uh, where the unseen tiles are. And then you can 
I guess, stop it from claiming it's lost all the time because Gemini likes to do that. Other agents uh, probably do that too. So you can say you're not lost. This is where the tiles are that you need that you haven't seen yet. And then actually without this, Gemini really loves claiming it's stuck. It's like, oh, there, there's like no way to get from point A to B when there's actually really obvious ways to get there. Like you can see that, but Gemini can't. So this is where the minimap comes in useful. And then on top of that, you build like a pathfinder. So this is a tool that I guess the main agent can use and it can say, I want to get from this point A to point B. And then the tool spits out like a list of coordinates on how to get there. Uh, for me, in my harness, I used uh, an agent. It actually, it's not code at all. It just tells the agent, hey, this is the map and simulate like an algorithm to spit out the correct path. And it actually does that pretty well. Uh, but for this like poke agent challenge, you can probably just uh, like code an actual navigation algorithm, whatever, breadth for search. So this is an example of what I mean when I say it claims it's stuck all the time. You can, this is Mount Moon in Pokemon Blue or Red. And the real path is you have to go through this magenta highlighted route. It's very roundabout, lots of detours. And then the AI sees like the ladder top left, it knows, okay, it's north, northeast. Oh, sorry, not Northwest. And it's just going to bash its head against this wall here, trying to get there if, if you don't have like this grid system. Because uh, with, with this proper map memory, you can have it calculate the actual route. And then it's like, oh, it's, it's actually this way. So with the harness that you need to do for Pokemon Emerald, it's uh, you might also need a couple other things. Like I already mentioned here that Gemini uh, plays Pokemon harness, use a separate large language model to simulate BFS or A star reasoning, but you can just build something in, I'm sure. And then of course, if there's any puzzles that need solving in Emerald, you might want to write like a domain specific solver or some sort of assistant to plan the solutions. And then what I actually did is in the Pokemon Yellow run that we did later on, it's uh, I gave it it's uh, the ability to make its own tools, like write snippets of Python code essentially. But uh, this probably is also not applicable in this challenge. It, it's it's fun. It's really cool to do, like seeing the model come up with its own. Uh, tools, assistance, whatever, its own agents, but it's it can also get it wrong a lot of times, so you got to be careful. So we've been over most of the harness, uh, and what I would just recommend is you just get started with the starter kit. You get something done qu quickly, and then you figure out what doesn't work. You patch on top of that. Well, the key key takeaway I found was that the scaffolding is like more important than the model. It if you have a good scaffolding, like a great model is not going to do anything if you don't give it the information that it needs. So if you find your setup failing, like the model doesn't know how to do something or it keeps failing at a typical task, you need to figure out why it's doing that and then give it the right tools to let it let it succeed and i think that's the key takeaway you got to take from this like the right tools not a perfect model enable long horizon success and yeah that's my talk if you have any questions uh, you can post them in discord you can also uh, contact me on twitter and you can also email me and if 
if you're interested, I'm also planning to open source my harness. It'll be under this, uh, my website here, arisef.org, A-R-I-S-E-F dot O-R-G. And just keep an eye out for that. All right, thank you guys.